few things that I've learned through experimentation and trial and error is uh, when you're dealing with this clay, once you nuke it up, it turns into a liquid. And you want to make sure that you kind of mix it up. You don't want to have any big chunks still in there, so when you're pouring it, it splatters, and you got to do some cleanup before you can uh, work with your actual model and pour your silicone. So I give it a good stir. I nuke this for about two and a half minutes. And as you can see, it turns that clay pretty much liquid. So now I will get ready to pour it. Da, da, da. So now I'm getting ready to actually pour my clay. Now, you also want to make sure it's not too hot. Because remember, this is plastic I'm pouring into. It's a 3D print. So you kind of want to get that nice middle ground where it's still liquid, but it's not scolding hot. As you can see, I can kind of grab the whole pot with my hands, so it's not that bad. And you basically want to do it just like you were pouring silicone or anything else like that. You want to start it at the lowest point and just kind of let it fill itself up. Now I'm probably going to have to make another batch of this to fill this whole thing up. As you can see, this is actually pouring pretty well. I'm not getting any big chunks splattering up or anything like that. And there we go for round one. Now the nice thing is it'll always self-level. So as I go to nuke up some more, I don't have to really worry that much about it. And through the magic of time lapse, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, I have another nuked cup O clay. So again, I'm just going to kind of give it a good stir. Make sure there's no big chunkies. Just to save myself some hassle from having to do cleanup later. And then start pouring again. Now this time I want to keep watching. I want that center line to be nice and centered. Oops, see that big chunk right there? Oops. That gave me a big old splatter. See, now I'm going to start watching where I'm pouring to get that good center line. Oh, see, he's flatter. Now I'm going to clean up that a little bit. And see, I can kind of build in certain areas as it cools. Now, I'm not going to worry about those bubbles that much because I'm going to end up going over this with a heat gun because it's actually going to pull away a little bit from the model as it cools down. Another good trick for intricate areas is you can actually use, and I'm going to grab one here in a second, a syringe. I'm getting pretty close to being in my halfway mark. I'm getting pretty close to being out of clay. Oh, dang it. See, I'm going to have to clean that bit up. I got in a hurry. Oh, 
And I'm probably gonna need a little bit more clay, one more round. So I will return. Okay, so now let's kind of uh, set up a little bit. Before I pour any more, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with a heat gun and see exactly where I'm at with everything. So I don't wanna over pour and start covering anything that's gonna be a problem pulling it out of the mold. I've also pre-cut a couple dowels that I'm gonna use for those air vents I was talking about. So I'll place those in as well. So the cool thing about using the clay is, you just hit it with a little bit of heat and you can re-level everything out. It'll also help you to fill in some of those uh, gaps and areas like that. And pull it in nice and close to the edge of the gun. And see, I'm pretty much at a halfway mark. So I might not have to actually add any more. I'm going to add a little bit in between there, but I'll do that in a second with some fresh clay. But while this is still a little bit wet, I want to go ahead and place my keys here. So I want to have one big key going from this little end right here on up. And I can cut out that end. I'm not worried about that. Then I want to have a piece connecting these two air pockets for this guy here. See, I'm just kind of pressing these in a little bit. Then I use my tweezers because the trigger is always a problem. So I made a little bitty piece to stick in between the trigger and the trigger guard. Then I made a nice long one to go into the barrel here to get that side up a little bit. And I made a piece for the end. And this is actually probably going to be my main pour spout. Stick that guy in like that. And then I made one more because this is going to be an issue right here. So I want to have one to connect these to help that resin completely fill up the bottom. So as it's filling up here, it'll have an access to go up through there. Now you see these aren't exactly touching, but that's no big deal. Because once I'm done with it, I'll be able to take a little exacto knife and cut those out. Then I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of heat to level those areas out. Doesn't take much. You see how using the heat gun will also give me a nice, perfectly straight line when I'm pouring my resin. I'll have a nice, clean, oops, let's see a little pot, air pocket right there. See how it's going to give me a nice, straight line going across the entire, uh, gun. I want to make sure that I don't have anything that's going to be an undercut. It's going to hang anything up. <clears throat> Once that dries, I'll be able to just knock off those couple of edges there that have a little bit of splash over. It's easy to knock off, which makes it kind of simple, kind of nice. And see how it's pulling away a little bit right here? That's just because when it cools, it uh, contracts a little bit so I'm just gonna hit it again just to kind of keep it all nice and close 
Give me that nice straight edge. Doesn't have to be exactly up to it. I just am uh, very particular, so I like to make sure I have nice straight lines. And there we go. That is a nice, easy way to clay up your model. Now I'm going to go ahead and let this set, and then I'll put in my keys. Okay, now we're back. I have let the clay nice get nice and solid. It's cooled down. It's all cool and awesome. Now it's time to start setting some keys inside of here. Now for the keys, I'd like to just use regular hex nuts. And I use an extender to make it easier to push them down. And I got three different sizes here for three different, you know, different areas inside of here. Now the key when you're doing your keys, and I'll start with the middle size here is you want to try to keep it as close as you can to the model and make sure that model locks in there nice and good. So I'm just going to start maybe here. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to push this in. And then pull it out. Now I want to do this all the way around. And then also have some on the outside to make sure that, that those two pieces of the mold lock together really well. And you want to have quite a few of these guys. You see, I'm just kind of going around. Sometimes I'll smooth out the edges if I get a little bit of a lip to it. I just want to keep doing that throughout the entire um, mold. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. And then I'll come back and I'll show you what I end up with. 